On Friday, I had you working through some sort of basic limit problems because limits are going to be very, very important in this second unit of the course. So go ahead and get that homework assignment out and check over your answers, help each other understand. Uh, pause the video right here and then we'll begin today's lesson. Okay, so Today we begin Unit 2, which is all about limits and their applications. Specifically today, we're going to focus on L'Hopital's rule, okay? Uh, before we do that, I want to remind you about the definition of continuity. That's a concept that deals with limits that your homework over the weekend didn't cover. And so to remind you of continuity, uh, to test for continuity, we have to check three things. First to test whether a function is continuous at some x value c, we have to check that the limit as x approaches c of that function exists, that f of c itself exists, and that the limit as x approaches c of f of x and f of c itself are equal, okay? So the limit needs to exist there, the function needs to exist there, and the limit and the function need to equal each other at that point. If the first two conditions hold, but the third fails, then we have what's called a removable discontinuity uh, at x equals c, and that's going to look something like this, where I have kind of a hole in the function, and then the function itself is defined up here. Okay, so number one is true. The limit exists. The limit is equal to whatever the y value where this hole is. f of c exists. That's this point up here, but the third fails. This is a removable discontinuity. All right, so I believe your Calc AB teacher last year taught you a little bit about L'Hopital's rule. Today we're going to do a lot more with it. Okay, so what you learned last year was that if the limit as x approaches a of some expression that can be written as a ratio of two separate functions, f of x and g of x, is indeterminate, that's an important word here, then the limit as x approaches a of f of x over g of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a of f prime of x over g prime of x. In other words, if I evaluate this limit by substitution and I get something indeterminate, then that limit is equal to uh, the same limit but taking the derivative of the numerator and the denominator. To be clear, you cannot always do this. This is only true if the ratio you're looking at is indeterminate. Uh, what are the indeterminate forms? Well, last year you learned zero over zero. And actually that's probably the only one you learned. Um, you learned that if you take a limit and you get zero over zero, then you can take the derivative of the numerator, take the derivative of the denominator, and reevaluate that limit. But there are other indeterminate forms. The second one I want to mention is infinity over infinity. That is also indeterminate. Infinity over infinity is not necessarily 1. Sometimes it's 0, sometimes it's finity, infinity, sometimes it's 12. Uh, so infinity over infinity is not an answer. We would uh, perform the L'Hopital rule uh, operation, I guess, and reevaluate our limit. There are others. Infinity times 0 is indeterminate because we've learned that multiplying anything by infinity is going to make it infinite, but multiplying anything by zero is going to make it zero. So which term wins? Does the thing that's approaching infinity dominate, or does the thing that's approaching zero dominate? We don't know. It's indeterminate. Infinity minus infinity. It's not zero. Not all infinities are created equal, so when I subtract them, I may get zero, I may get infinity, I may get a finite value. It's indeterminate. 1 raised to the infinity power is also indeterminate. Uh, you've learned all your life that 1 raised to any number is 1, but you've also learned, probably more recently, that anything raised to the infinity power is infinite. So which one dominates, the thing that's approaching 1 or the thing that's approaching infinity? It's indeterminate. And 0 raised to the 0 power. Similarly, you've learned that 0 raised to any power is 0. But you've learned that anything raised to the zero power is one. We have a contradiction there. This is indeterminate. You do need to recognize these indeterminate forms. Oops, one more. 
Infinity to the zero power, same idea. I have an infinite base, but a zero exponent. Zeroing the exponent makes things equal to one. However, this infinity here may dominate that zero. These are the seven indeterminate forms. However, only these two can be L'Hopital directly, okay? Um, I can only perform what we're looking at up here, taking the derivative of the numerator over the derivative of the denominator, if I have a numerator and denominator. So 0 over 0, infinity over infinity, fine, I can L'Hopital. Any of these others, I need to perform some algebra first, and then I can perform L'Hopital's rule. Let's look at some examples. Here's a simple 0 over 0 example. I have the limit as x approaches 0 of e to the x minus 1 over x. Even though this is the first example, I'd actually like you to pause here, solve this on your own. It should take about one to two minutes, uh, and then unpause the video and I'll go over it. All right, I see that if I actually substitute zero, I have e to the zero minus one over zero, which is one minus one over zero, which is zero over zero. This is indeterminate, so I'm gonna perform L'Hopital's rule. This will now be equal to the limit, that's too many bumps on that m, as x approaches 0. The derivative of the numerator is e to the x over the derivative of the denominator is 1. Now I can perform substitution, e to the 0 over 1, that's a fine answer, as is 1. Notice I showed up here that this is indeterminate. Okay, not every limit is going to require L'Hopital's rule. Don't get in the habit of always doing this. Check first that it's actually indeterminate. Here's another example. Uh, this is an infinity over infinity example. So the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of x over x gives me the natural log of infinity over infinity. Natural log is a slow growing function, but it always keeps growing, okay? So out at infinity, the natural log is approaching infinity, albeit slowly. So this is infinity over infinity, which means I can L'Hopital. So this is equivalent to the limit as x approaches infinity. The numerator, when I take the derivative, becomes one over x, over the denominator becomes one. If I simplify this, I have the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over x. 1 over infinity. Please don't actually say this is equal to 1 over infinity. Don't write that. Infinity is not a number. We can't actually substitute infinity. I do not want to see that on your paper. However, we can do this in our heads. As the denominator is getting bigger and bigger and is approaching an infinite value, let's say, Okay, what's happening to the overall fraction? Well, as the denominator gets bigger and bigger, a fraction gets smaller and smaller. One half, one third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one one millionth. What is that approaching? It's approaching zero. And remember that limits are not about actual quantities that we are equal to, okay? It's about what we're approaching as x is approaching a certain number. So. 1 over infinity, we're going to call that 0. All right, let's do a 0 times infinity example. If I just substitute infinity, I have, oh, I'm not going to put an equal sign there. I'm just going to show some scratch work out to the side. e to the negative infinity times the square root of infinity. e to the negative infinity is 1 over e to the infinity times the square root of infinity. 1 over e to the infinity, 1 over something infinite is 0. The square root of something infinite is still infinite. So this is a 0 times infinity example. Remember, we can only L'Hopital if I have 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity. So I need to perform some algebra here in order to make that viable. What do you think we should do? I'm thinking we should move this e to the negative x into the into the denominator with a positive exponent. So I'm going to rewrite this as the limit as x approaches infinity of the square root of x over e to the x. Now I have the square root of infinity over e to the infinity 
which is infinity over infinity. All I've done is algebra. I can now perform L'Hopital's rule, though. This is equivalent to the limit as x approaches infinity. The derivative of the square root of x is 1 half x to the negative 1 half over the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. So I rewrite this. I need to do some simplification here. I can't think through that. The 2 goes into the denominator. The x to the negative 1 half I'm going to move to the denominator as a square root of x and the e to the x is going to stay in the denominator. So I have 1 over 2 times the square root of something approaching infinity times e to the something approaching infinity. I have a whole lot of infinity in the denominator and a 1 in the numerator. This is also going to be 0. All right, here's an interesting example. Uh, this one's a little tricky, so you're going to need to follow along pretty carefully here. This is a 1 to the infinity example. When I plug in infinity for x, I have 1 plus 1 over infinity raised to the infinity. 1 over infinity we've established is 0, so I have 1 to the infinity. That is indeterminate. So I need to get this into a L'Hopitalable form, either 0 over 0, or infinity over infinity, which is not simple here, okay? So I want you to watch this technique. You're gonna wonder, man, how did Miss Kramer know how to do this? Well, I knew how to do this because I knew how to get the answer, okay? I knew how to do this because somebody showed me this technique and I am showing you this technique. So when you have one that's dealing with sort of a one to the infinity or one of the other indeterminate forms that looks like this, here's how you're gonna handle it. You're going to insert a y. y is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over x raised to the x. Okay, all I've done is set this equal to something. Then you are going to take the natural log of both sides. And because of the continuity of this expression, um, I'm actually going to put the natural log inside of the limit because in this case the natural log of the limit and the limit of the natural log are the same thing. Okay, so I have the natural log of y is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x. Now why did I do the natural log here? Well, because my log rules tell me that if I have the log of some argument that includes an exponent, that exponent can come out front as a coefficient. What I mean by that is the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x to the x is equal to x times the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x. Okay, That x can move down out front as a coefficient. So I'm going to say natural log of y is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of x times the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x. Still not even close, okay? So I still need to get this into a fractional form. So I'm going to take the simpler of these two, which I think is the x, move it into the denominator with a negative exponent. Natural log of y is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of the natural log of 1 plus 1 over x over x to the negative 1. I just move the x to the denominator with a negative exponent. This is algebraically equivalent to what I had. And now I see the limit as x approaches infinity, natural log of 1 plus 1 over x. As x goes to infinity, this term goes to 0, and I'm left with the natural log of 1, that's 0, over infinity to the negative 1, that's 1 over infinity, that's 0. Now I can L'Hopital. Um, I'm going to switch colors because this is starting to get difficult to read. Hopefully red's okay. So the natural log of y is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity. I'm going to take the derivative of the numerator. The derivative of natural log is 1 over 1 plus 1 over x times the derivative of the stuff, which is negative 1 over x squared over the derivative of x to the negative 1 is negative x to the negative 2, in other words, negative 1 over x squared. 
All I did right here is perform L'Hopital's rule. I took the derivative of the numerator, that's this, and I took the derivative of the denominator, that's this. The reason I chose to write those this way is that these two are going to divide out. That makes my life a little nicer. I have the natural log of y is equal to the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 over 1 plus 1 over x. Let's substitute. 1 over 1 plus 1 over infinity is 0. And so I'm left with 1 over 1, which is 1. However, 1 is not the answer. The natural log of y is equal to 1. Remember, we set this equal to y and took the natural log of both sides. I don't want to know what the natural log of y is. I want to know what y is. So I solve this for y by doing e to the on both sides. And my answer is that y is equal to e. So this limit here, the limit as x approaches infinity of 1 plus 1 over x raised to the x is equal to e. That is my final answer. That's a tricky one. Uh, and actually, we're going to talk about this type of limit a lot more tomorrow. So if this was so completely out of your comfort zone, uh, wait till tomorrow and see if that makes you feel a little better. I think I have one more example. This is an infinity minus infinity example. I have x approaching 1 from the right. Okay, I had to specify from the right because at x equals 1, this second term has an infinite discontinuity, right? Uh, and so I had to specify which side of the limit I'm talking about. As I approach 1, I have 1 over 0 minus 1 over 0. And if uh, x is slightly more than 1, then this is a number approaching 0 but slightly positive which means I have positive infinity minus positive infinity. Uh, and so this is indeterminate, and I'm going to need to use L'Hopital's rule. What would you do here to put this in a single fractional form? I'm thinking we need common denominators. So I'm going to multiply this one by x over 1, sorry, x minus 1 over x minus 1. And I'm going to multiply this one by natural log of x over natural log of x. So that's going to leave me the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of x minus 1 minus natural log of x over natural log of x times x minus 1. And I can verify that this is still indeterminate. 1 minus 1 is 0 minus the natural log of 1 is 0. That's 0 over the natural log of 1 is 0, 1 minus 1 is 0, 0 times 0 is 0. This is L'Hopitalable. So this is equal to the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. The derivative of the numerator is going to be 1 minus 1 over x over the derivative of the denominator. Yuck, we're going to have to use the product rule. Uh, natural log of x times the derivative of the second term is 1 plus x minus 1 times the derivative of the first is 1 over x. Okay, I uh, do this and I get 1 minus 1 over 1 over the natural log of 1 plus 1 minus 1 times 1 over 1 and I get 1 minus 1 is 0 over 0 plus 0, and darn it, I get 0 over 0 again. What this means is that I have to L'Hopital again, okay? Um, I'm thinking before I L'Hopital again that I might want to do a little bit of simplification here, um, especially on the second part of the denominator, so I'm thinking I'm going to clean that up a little bit. Let's change colors. Um, Let's, oh, that's probably too light. Sorry, guys. That's better. Um, okay, so the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. I'm going to keep the numerator the same. I don't think there's really much I can do to simplify that. Over the natural log of x plus, I'm going to distribute this 1 over x and call this 1 minus 1 over x. I think that'll be a little bit simpler. Okay, this is still 0 over 0. 
So this is now equal to the limit as x approaches 1 from the right. I'm going to take the derivative of the numerator, and that's going to be positive 1 over x squared over the derivative of the denominator is 1 over x plus 1 over x squared. I'm thinking I can just substitute in my 1 now. So 1 over 1 squared is 1 over 1 over 1 is 1 plus 1 over x squared is 1. And thank goodness I'm done. This gave me 1 half. That's it for today's lesson. Here is homework assignment number 2. Uh, I want you to not pay too much attention to the directions in this assignment. Um, for example, for numbers 45 and up, it says to do some graphing thing and verify. I don't want you to do all that. I just want you to evaluate each limit. Um, I don't think all of these require L'Hopital's rule. Remember to be critical of that. Don't just jump into L'Hopital's. See if it's just a straightforward substitution limit first.